Uh oh, looks like we got this thing at 50% heat, but the burner is at 100%. We've got a problem with this switch. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we've got a little bit of, of a different scene today. We're not in the garage, we're in the kitchen. And it's a little deviation from my normal content of computers and cars. So what happened was my uh, switch here on my stove started acting up. We haven't been able to control the heat on this thing for a while now. And I did some research online. It looks like the infinity switch, which is the piece behind it, which is the part I have here today, is broken. So right now it's either on or off. So what's, what we're gonna do today is replace this $45 switch, which should be pretty easy, I hope. So I gotta pull this thing out from the wall and unplug it, so we'll go ahead and just pull this baby out. So to take off this rear panel, it's pretty easy. I think it's like 10 Phillips screws around here and then this whole back panel pops out and then you have access to the switch right here and I think it has two bolts on the front. So we'll go ahead and take that off now and I'll show you inside. So now that we're in here, it's a pretty basic switch. So they got the harnesses on either side that kind of pull out. You gotta pull the knob out of the front over here to remove the two screws behind there to pop it out in the back and then you replace it. Each one of the knobs is different on here. So this one right here is an infinity one, which is the same model number as that one right there. And then this one for my model is slightly different. And the one over here is different too, and it's for all the different burner options that you have up front. The Infinity means it just spins forever, right? The one right here and that one are the same, even though they have different burners. And then this one right here is just high and low, and then this one's got a multi-zone. So that explains why you have three different types back here for the switches. So before we get started, we'll just go ahead and pull the switches on the back here, or the harness off. It should just pull right out. There, so that one came off. Oh. Kind of snapped that plastic a little bit there. Not a big deal. It's really just to protect the edges. Go ahead and pick up the pieces there. Gotta pull this harness back into there. It is kind of tight. I don't know what's really holding it back other than just the friction from the the spades. We'll go ahead and take the screws up the on the front now and, and get inside. So next thing we want to do is just take the switch off so you just pull this handle out and access the two screws back here and just get your drill or your screwdriver and unscrew those. Pretty simple there and then which comes right out and then you just replace it with the one that you got. So the switch I just took out was a Invensys and it was a W10411934 and it's from this eight year old Whirlpool that I have here and the replacement one I have is an OEM part. It's now made by Robert Shaw which I think they just bought out that Invensys company. It's the same exact part number. This one, I think the bag that it came with showed that it was manufactured like two months ago. So it's brand new. It wasn't old stock or anything. So just basically just put it back in the same way that we took it off. Put the two screws in front just to hold it. And then replug the harness in and it's pretty straightforward and easy. So you just want to make sure that all the wires are plugged in. You know that one piece that I broke earlier which really didn't matter much. It was really just to keep that spade in there. It's nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and test it now to see if it operates properly. So we got this baby plugged in. Just gotta go ahead and put the switch back on. It only goes in one way with the little notch on there. Make sure it turns on. It is getting warm. So my problem before was when we had no kind of control on the, the heat. So 
Now I'm going to go down to like 50% and we'll see if it stays at 50% or so it did go down. So right when it kind of heated up and it got too hot, it actually turned off. So that's good. So we turned it up to medium. It's heating up to medium like it's supposed to. We'll go turn it back down to low. Looks like it's working. It wasn't doing that before. It would just stay high all the time. So I found my issue. I took the switch apart and I discovered that this little chip right here, which is the potentiometer, it's got a little thing right there that looks like it's burnt and it's actually flaking off right now, right there. And that's what controls the temperature. Because once that thing, I think, heats up to a certain thing, it, it sends current through this thing and it actually flips up and down and makes a contactor uh, activate and that one is burnt out right there so that's what failed on this thing and it cost me $45 to replace. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for this quick video on fixing the switch on my Whirlpool stove. I know this is a little bit of a deviation from my normal uh, videos where I do car stuff and computer stuff, but you know, I figured this is a common problem and some of you guys might find it useful. Anyways, if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel for different uh, car videos and computer videos and DIY videos, go ahead and give me a subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time.